Dell defends its deal to go private. Let's talk to Reuters correspondent Ernie Scheider. All right, Ernie, Dell out today in a securities filing saying that a special committee of the board looked into this deal. They hired a prominent management consultant and that they looked at many other strategic alternatives, but this was the best deal to go private for shareholders. Yes, this is really Dell's board coming out and saying, look, we heard Southeastern, which is a large right. uh, Dell shareholder, late last week coming out, and they basically said, look, we feel like the company is worth a lot more than 1365 a share. Right. So today, this is basically Dell's board retort and saying, look, we looked around, we feel that this is the best option for the long-term vitality of Dell as a company, and there's a lot of potential if we go private at 1365 a share, and continue to go our business from there. So what do you think? They looked around. I mean, did they, do you think that they actually looked at potential buyers? I mean, to talk, tease this out with us. I mean, it, so, it certainly sounds like they And did. who would that be? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, there were rumors for a while that Microsoft would be interested in buying the whole company. Right. Uh, we know that Microsoft is involved in a little bit of the financing uh, for the Dell private deal. Yeah. Um, so they were listed as a big one, but really one of Dell's core businesses is PCs out there right now, and so they really have to kind of transform themselves. Who wants a PC maker? The, the list isn't that big, so yeah. your, your guess is as good as mine. Well, we've got our own Rob Searin from Breaking Views, who's been on this show many times, who talks about why he actually thinks that this is a good deal for Dell to go private, and he's talking with Anthony Curry from Reuters Breaking Views. Let's give a listen. What do you think of when you think of Dell? You think of PCs, and that's a business right. which is simply, you know, vanishing right now. It's shrinking very rapidly. The problem, of course, is that investors are saying, okay, you've got, you've got lots of nice cash flow today, but will you have it tomorrow? And obviously some smart investors, such as Dell and, and, and Silver Lake, have come in and said, well, you know what? Even if you make a few more, a few, a few years of this cash flow, we're perfectly fine. Dell's other businesses uh, are doing pretty well. The company's bought a bunch of other businesses, about $11 billion worth right. of businesses. So, you know, that have very good cash flow. And these, these businesses are not going there. In fact, they're growing. So he's saying even though the PC business is waning, there's still a few more dollars to squeeze out there, <laughs> and they've got some other businesses that generate some cash. Well, you know, cash generation is the name of the game for a lot of businesses. Who knew? Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, just having a strategy on kind of, you know, taking as much water out of the sponge as you can and then hoping it'll grow in the future. I mean, I don't know about that. Michael Dell really has his work cut out for him, whether Dell goes private or stays public. The company has to come up with new products that really can wow, you know, the Apple factor. All right. And folks can check out more of Rob Searon talking about that on Reuters Breaking Views. Ernie, welcome me down to the hot spot. If check you it will, out. You know it will. And remember, folks, there are more snaps at the bottom of your screen for more news of the day. BlackBerry, okay, which we know relies a lot on corporate allegiances, that big corporations mm -hmm. give their employees lots of Blackberries. But Home Depot now saying that it's going to go with the iPhone, not the iPhone 5, but the iPhone 4S <laughs> for its employees instead of the Blackberry. And they've got about 10,000 employees there. Yes, one of the things that I really want to know here, though, is when was the decision made? Large corporations like Home Depot don't just come out of you know the woodwork and say, hey, we're going to do this. So yeah. this clearly had been in the works for a while. I would assume even before BlackBerry unveiled the 10, BlackBerry 10 model earlier this year. So you've got to assume, is Home Depot sort of kicking itself now? Would it have liked to stay in the BlackBerry network? Or you know, were the uh, Home Depot employees saying, look, all we want is iPhones? So there's <laughs> probably a little more you know, intrigue here. A lot, that uncertainty, I think, is what's affecting BlackBerry shares today. It is. Uh, and you know, basically, investors want to know, OK, you put out the BlackBerry 10. This is the first sign of a large employer out there switching away from your product. What does this mean for other companies? BlackBerry regaining some of those losses. We saw it down as much as 6% today. It was down less uh, 2%. Of course, security controls on BlackBerry have always been something that people have been drawn to. Yes. But I guess if you can figure those out on the iPhone as well, and you hear your, your, your workers clamoring for those, and perhaps the well, switch One there. of the appeals of the BlackBerry 10 is you can sort of splice the corporate side and the personal side. And yeah. so I think more companies will be interested in that feature. All right, let's move on to fast food, because we love talking about food <laughs> when it comes <laughs> it's to, lunch time. to trading at noon. All right, Wendy's, and the story in Barron's today, basically singing the praises of Wendy's, the number three burger chain here, and saying, look, they're doing everything from revamping the menu to putting you know portobello mushrooms in there, which you don't see at a lot of fast food places. No. Redoing the logo, revamping the stores to make them very experiential, you mm -hmm. make them sound and feel like cool places to hang out. Uh, the stock today is up 4%. Yes, these are all very, very positive changes, and you have to do it. You know, you have to spend money to make money. You know, the largest shareholder in Wendy's, Owen Nelson Pollitt, he's been focused right. for a while saying that he thinks that Wendy's shares are undervalued. 
That being said, it's a very, very tough business, the burger business out there right now. Sure. Customers don't want to pay $20 for a burger at Wendy's. And so the margins, while they have been growing a little bit at Wendy's, are still very, very tight across the board. That's why you see right. McDonald's getting into other areas like coffee or Because their you know, same store snacks. sales were down for January. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's a tough business to be in regardless. And even though McDonald's has seen weakness recently, it's still the, uh, you know, the giant in this space right now. And so they're going to be a formidable contender. Let's not forget about Burger King either because Burger King has, you know, big plans as well to grow really in the fast food space and they're not going to happy, be happy with Wendy's or even you know let them rise without a fight. So. Right. Well they've got some people at the helm there from Yum. Mm -hmm. I believe you helped turn Taco Bell around. Emil Brolick who I think worked with Dave Thomas. He did in the 90s. Yep. Right. Before Dave Thomas passed away in 2010. But uh, these barons you know sort of chronicling the past 18 months at Wendy's and saying that they're really trying to give give a big push. All right. Let's push back to the market monitor and Check look at U.S. stocks today and see what everybody's What's going on? Eh, we're basically flat there. Not too much action going on uh, mm -hmm. with the market today. We have the energy sector that's weighing on the S&P 500. Story out of the Wall Street Journal um, that's saying that despite the soaring indexes that we've seen lately, of course, the Dow recently hit 14,000. Uh, the Nasdaq closed at a 12-year high on Friday. The S&P 500 closed at a five-year high. That some companies sort of retreating and pulling back, particularly when mm -hmm. it comes to their forecasts. Globally, they still feel like we're on unsteady footing uh, and perhaps pulling back a lot on investments. The Wall Street Journal did a survey saying 2% uh, of the S&P, 50 companies in the S&P, saying they're only investing 2% uh, as opposed to about 8% in the first nine months mm -hmm. of 2012. What do you make of this? Well, a lot of companies, you know, they were burned in 2012 and 2011 when they came into those years and they put out big bullish forecasts. And so I think a lot of executives ended 2012 and they're like, look, I'm going to come into 2013 and I'm going to be very, very cautious. And I think for right, right reasons, you know, a lot of companies are seeing weak demand, especially in Europe. Where that's, you know, we've talked about a lot, you know, the European consumer and not yep. spending. But also, you know, a lot of U.S. consumers are still very anxious about you know, what's happening in Washington, D.C. Will we hit another fiscal cliff? Let's take a look at some companies, actually, that are pulling back because Corning and Dow Chemical, mm -hmm. and uh, it, actually, here's the ones that are spending. We probably looked at those before. Mm -hmm. Polaris, I'd love to get me one of those Polarises. Those are very <laughs> cool it little vehicles. But on the flip side is that there's still some out there, and you can talk about GE and, you know, obviously, Huge and some others that are maybe throwing caution to the wind or saying, look, we can see pockets here where we can perform. Well, look, Lisa, across the board, any of these CEOs you talk to, they're, they're going to say they're not bullish, but they are going to say that there are pockets of strength out there right now. You know, right. Jeff Omoda at GE, he's very bullish on the energy picture, and oil and gas is very, very big for General Electric right now. They supply parts that are used to frack, and fracking is very big in the U.S. Midwest and other parts of the world right now. So that's a positive area. But you know what? There are also pockets of weakness. All right. Thank you so much, Ernie Scheider. Remember, everybody, follow us on Twitter at Reuters Insider and check out more great videos, Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard. This is Reuters.